It is time to open up tonight's unsolved case file, and this one goes all the way back to 2001. Little baby Jacqueline abducted at a swap meet. Whitney Clark uh, from our great affiliate KGUN in Tucson has the story. From high school graduation to the big dance, the sweet moments of life often turn bittersweet for 19-year-old Nayeli Vasquez. As growing up, I would always do my research on her to see if um, anything new would come up. Um, Nayeli didn't get to grow up with her baby sister, Jacqueline. She only saw her transform into a teenager through age progression photos and missing posters. I would always try to look for her on Facebook and see if anybody would look like me. Nayeli was just two years old the day her sister went missing. Jacqueline remains a missing piece in the family and a painful part of their past. Her case is packed up in boxes at the Avondale Police Department. The binders full of handwritten reports take us back to a swap meet in Avondale in 2001. Nayeli's mom took her into a porta pot and left Jacqueline just outside in a car seat. Moments later, the baby was gone. Officer Ray Emmett with Avondale PD says there was a massive search, but no real witnesses. Someone at the outdoor market noticed a woman hanging around the area who made a remark about the child. It was enough for police to make this composite sketch. They never found the woman. What happened to baby Jacqueline is still a mystery. Our thought is, or our hope is, that she's still out there today that maybe somebody that took her is raising her right now she doesn't even know. Hope is also a feeling Nayeli has clung to over the years. This is the first time she has spoken publicly about her sister. She often hears stories about missing girls reunited with loved ones, like the three women held captive in Ohio. That could be my sister coming back home, even though she's been missing a lot of years. She, that can be her coming back home to us and seeing that whole reunion of them being happy to have their family back. I want that happiness. To, to, to come to our family. Investigators want people to know Jacqueline has a heart-shaped birthmark on her arm. It's unclear what that may look like today, but it's one of her defining features that was first reported when she went missing. Okay, we have a phone number. 623-333-7001. 623-333-7001. Think about that heart-shaped birthmark. This was 21 years ago. I mean, she's 20, she's over 21 years old now, Jacqueline. And we say baby Jacqueline, Jacqueline's a young woman. And that's what I'm hoping. And that's, that's I think we're all hoping that that's the case, that someone abducted her to raise her as their own. And obviously that has complications associated with it, but that would mean that she is healthy and alive today. Let's bring back in our investigators. Still with us, private investigator Rob Joseph, retired FBI special agent, senior lecturer at the University of New Haven, Kenneth Gray, and private investigator Erica Morse. Uh, Rob Joseph, um, your thoughts about this one. I mean, I sit here and I hope that there is a young woman somewhere who's, who's looking at her arm tonight and, and looking for that, that birthmark. Yeah, there, there really is uh, no indication that any type of um, thing happened other than exactly what has been reported. And so, yeah, there is a high likelihood that this young woman is out there. Um, and it's just a matter of somebody kind of working something out here. So, you know, 21 years ago, somebody rolled up somewhere around family and friends with, with a child. And, you know, maybe back then, they had some good excuses for how they came to have this child with them. But uh, it's this, this type of attention that will maybe trigger people even all these years later. Uh, and, you know, when you're talking specific things about a birthmark and, you know, I, I think you grow up, you become a young, a young adult and you look at your parents and, you know, sometimes you might scratch your head and, and be like, I look nothing like my parents and wonder. And um, if I was if I was Jacqueline's family, I would be taking all the DNA tests with family ancestry and every other type of test that I could take just to get that DNA out there, because there, there's a high likelihood that if Jacqueline is looking at her family and wondering, maybe they told her a story, you know, when she questioned it, that she was adopted, that it might lead her to take a DNA test. But, 
you know, this is how people are found. Kenneth Gray, is there a profile of the, the type of person that would abduct a baby like this in, in such a, I mean, it, it's such a random moment or, or a moment of opportunity, it seems, at this swap meet. Sure. Um, you're thinking that the person who uh, grabbed the baby kept the baby and raised it of, as their own. However, more likely, the person at a swap meet grabbed that baby and sold it at, on the market uh, for somebody that wanted a baby, that wanted to, to adopt and couldn't adopt for some reason. So a, a three-month-old baby like that is worth a lot of money. And so the person who bought the baby, raised them on their, as their own, told the, the baby that you were adopted as they grew up. But uh, I would not expect that the person who kidnapped the, uh, kidnapped the child raised it themselves. Erica Morris, your thoughts about uh, Jacqueline? Wow, we covered this back in July, Vinny, and this was the one that I, I talked to Nayeli about doing the TikTok. Um, show me that, show, uh, show me your heart shaped birthmark. And I really hope that she's been able to do that and, and want to get some follow up on that. But tip some extra notes on this one. I really want her to go on adopted.com, try to build a sibling profile, because I think the guys are on to something with the fact that she could be adopted. Um, I'd also take a look at some newspaper archives from that time frame and see if any babies were listed as deceased, because those parents would then be desperate enough to adopt and potentially adopt on the black market. So I'd be looking at obits region wide, maybe even statewide, and there are phenomenal archives. And I worked in newspaper. The morgues back then were fantastic. They were triple and quadruple uh, uh, cut back then, you know. So um, I'd also be interested interested in having Nayeli use some open source facial recognition software because these were full sisters I do believe so chances are they look well enough alike that, that she could get a partial match off of a facial recognition so I think that there are a lot of new technology aspects and going back to some old ones like archives where we could just really dig into this and again I, you know I love talking to Nayeli last time and I'd love to talk to her again because I think this one could potentially be very solvable absolutely wow Rob Joseph Kenneth Gray Erica Morse appreciate your time on this Friday night thank you so much